You know, when it comes to driving an electric vehicle or a plug-in hybrid, I know that many of you are big fans. And the latest numbers from the state of Oregon show that more than 60,000 electric or plug-in hybrids are roaming around in Oregon. Now, I have to say, I think the number actually is much higher since that number was last updated in November of 2022. Apparently, no one at the Oregon Department of Energy cares enough to get a fresh number. I mean, I emailed them today, no reply. Anyway, it's a lot of vehicles, but there are also some headwinds. The first thing is the cost. This graph from the Oregon Department of Energy shows the issue for one car as an example. The 2021 Hyundai Kona Ice versus the Hyundai Kona EV. They're basically the same car. One's electric, one is not. On the right, the gas-powered car costs roughly $20,500. On the left, the electric vehicle starts around $37,300. So, if we use those numbers, the electric car is $17,000 more. But, the federal government does offer up to $7,500 in tax credits, although the list of which vehicles qualify is changing tomorrow. And the state of Oregon offered $2,500 to $7,500 in rebates for buying electric, but that program ran out of money last month, so it's on hold now and don't count on it. There's also the added cost of having to buy a charger for your home, although utilities offer money to help with that too. In the Portland area, that means Pacific Power and PGE, which offer about 500 bucks and up to 1,000 for those who are lower income. So that helps a little bit, although you still have to hire your own electrician, etc. At least those numbers show it is still more expensive to buy electric. But let's not lose sight of the big picture here. There is a fundamental change underway with a purpose to reduce greenhouse gases and save our planet. And yes, I do hear those of you who say China and India are big problems and nothing that we do here matters. I disagree. I think it all matters, the big stuff and the little stuff. It's an amazing time of transformation. Someone with a front row seat to all of this is Jeff Allen. He's executive director of a nonprofit called Forth. Its goal is to get rid of barriers for electric mobility, which I know is a little bit nebulous, but basically it means he's a big fan of electric cars. This is an incredibly complicated transition that we're making. And it's easy to get bogged down in all the things that could go wrong and all the things we're trying to do. But fundamentally, it's an incredibly exciting and optimistic story. You know, driving an electric car today in the Pacific Northwest is like driving a car that gets 120 miles per gallon or more. And it's the only car you can buy that gets cleaner every year you drive it because the grid is getting cleaner. All right, so you can tell he's a fan. Last week, the Biden administration announced new rules through the EPA, which could have the effect of turbocharging electric car sales. It would cut the allowable tailpipe emissions in half. That could mean that in just nine years, two out of every three new vehicles sold would be electric. In the meantime, different rules that take effect tomorrow will impact which electrics get a federal tax credit. Last summer, I visited the Herzog Meyer Volkswagen dealership in Beaverton. They were very nice. I was very impressed by their ID4 electric car. Well, this is kind of nice. It tells me how much battery I got there, how far I can. It says I can go 734 miles? Uh, no. no. <laughs> We're at 179 right now. Okay. It, this is the odometer. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, so I'm still learning my way around all the high-tech dashboards that cars have these days. Last summer, the biggest challenge was getting the vehicles into the showrooms. The supply chain problems that we had back then created a waiting list of a few months. When we shot this video, the ID4, which sells for between 35,000 and 55,000, did qualify for the federal tax credit. But as of tomorrow, it's gonna to be off the list. The New York Times reports that's happening because Volkswagen is still assessing its supply chain which I think means it needs to certify that it's assembled in North America and that the key battery parts come from North America. The chief executive for Volkswagen Group of America, by the way, has said he does expect the vehicle will qualify. The Times reports the Volkswagen was the fourth most popular EV in America, by the way, over the first quarter of 2023. The top three, Tesla, GM, and Ford. So here's the big change that's happening tomorrow. Remember when Congress passed the Inflation Reduction Act? It happened last August. The bill did a whole lot of things. The one, though, that we care about and we focus on 
is the one that promoted clean energy. When it comes to electric vehicles, the government is approving tax credits for vehicles from companies that basically make their batteries and cars in America. That was part of that act. According to a federal list put out by the government, seven auto companies and 14 vehicles will qualify for the full $7,500 tax credit. They include Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y, which are the best-selling electric vehicles in America. The least expensive version of the Model 3, by the way, is only getting half the tax credit because, according to the New York Times, the battery is made in China. There are also income restrictions. You cannot make more than $300,000 as a married couple. The vehicle has to be assembled in North America. Critical parts of the battery have to come from North America or trade partners. And the vehicle must not cost 80 grand, must cost 80 grand as the top or less if it's an SUV or van or pickup, 55 grand or less for other vehicles. So to sum all that up, the auto industry is finally serious about really moving toward electric. There are some changes in the tax incentives designed to bring down the price of electrics. The federal government appears to be behind the change in a big way. And advocates like Jeff Allen say you should get on board if you can. So it's one of the easiest, quickest, um, least painful things you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. And actually, Electric cars are better cars, right? They're faster, they're fun. You don't have to worry about stopping to get gas. So it really is a success story. And we are accelerating that transition um, at an incredible pace. So what are your thoughts about all this? Should the government be even more aggressive in its tax incentives or credits? Or is this just a bunch of green economy hype? Maybe something in between? I don't know. What do you think? Send me an email. The address is the story at kgw.com, or you could call and leave a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090. I look forward to hearing from you.